I saw the film because I, I, I came onto this quite late. So I only saw the film last night, but I thought it was really great. I mean, swirling in heads all night and all morning. So, um... Yeah, <laughs> not a good one for the old uh, peaceful dreams. <laughs> oh, I can't say it helped me sleep last night, but um, you know, no, it was it was really, it was really great. But um, I'll get. I know I haven't got too long today, so I'll just sort of get started. But I, 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 my first question really was: I mean, you are so used to seeing your name in title credits and closing kind of uh, credits too. But seeing a film by at the beginning of of a film does that does that elicit a different type of reaction? Is that a sort of a was that how does that feel to see your your name in in, in a different medium? I suppose sort of up on the on the screen. Yeah, I think I've always had kind of a weird relationship with with acting because I sort of fell into it. It wasn't something I actively pursued, like very much against the kind of type. And I was really young when I started, well, not a child, but like 17 when I got my first job. And so I think that really affects my uh, your relationship with it because um, I didn't go through sort of six or seven years of like, struggling to get an acting career that I wanted with all my heart you know it was something that I love and I and I you know have always had um you know a, a great sort of um passion for but I've also had kind of a conflicted relationship with it as well whereas this is something that I wanted you know I worked really 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 hard to become a director so the feeling of knowing that you know that you've done it and and you know, and I was very lucky and the film that I got to make was actually something that, you know, I, I was very proud of, I am very proud of, you know, um, is, yeah, it's a very different feeling. <laughs> um, I mean, the, the UK release is obviously coming quite soon. Have you got plans to go and see it with friends and family and stuff? Yeah, well, we've got quite a few pr previews. We've got a preview at the BFI coming out. I've got quite a few of my friends coming to see that and yeah, a few around the country. I mean, obviously it's the kind of film where there are going to be people I know who are definitely going to really want to see it. And like, I don't know if my aunt is going to want to see it, you know, but um, they will um, out of loyalty to me. But like, yeah, it's not the kind of movie that every single person I know is like, I mean, I have a few friends who are pregnant I don't know if they're going to want to see it, you know. Yeah, maybe wait for the home end release for that one when they've got it. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe watch that one. Yeah, yeah, VOD, yeah. <laughs> um, but because when you sort of hear um, a band, you know, like let's say they're, they're doing an, uh, an interview for their first album, it's often they kind of cite that it's a collection of songs that they've had for them for years. You know, that first album can be the songs that they were writing in their heads when they were teenagers. Is that quite a similar thing to you with your first kind of screenplay for a movie? Is this... Is this a story and these are there these ideas that you've actually had kind of brewing inside you for, for quite some time? Yeah, I think that there, yeah, there's definitely a kind of um when you start writing, I mean, this wasn't the first screenplay I ever wrote by any means. <laughs> you know, I, there are a lot of others, you know, um, that are still kind of crawling around in my in my um in my desk. But um I think that what happens with like an early piece of work like this is that you know your sort of um your subconscious is coming to the screen in a slightly less filtered way you know and you're kind of checking yourself a bit a bit less and you know and I think particularly with this film because the opportunity to write it was kind of presented to me like somebody said have you thought about writing a horror film and I was under no sort of I didn't put myself under that much uh, pressure to come up with a piece of work that I thought you know had to be like you know that I was uh, you know terrified of sh sort of showing the world I was just like huh okay I mean I love horror it's a genre I've always felt very strongly about maybe because I'd never acted in it it hadn't necessarily occurred to me to kind of pursue that direction and I just sort of thought okay I'll give it a shot and lo and behold <laughs> when you crack open that subconscious turns out there was a whole load of shit waiting to get out but in a way I think that that is something that I now would try and do with other projects would just try to kind of have as close connection as possible with what is brewing around inside you and not try and micromanage it too much, you know, to just always be really in, in touch with what's going on underneath, yeah. Do you think in some ways it was actually quite beneficial to this project that you haven't really acted in horror? Because it meant that when you were directing, it was a very, it came from a very natural place and wasn't in any way informed by other filmmakers or TV directors that you'd worked with. Yeah, I think that's very true. And also I think I um, had this huge part of myself 
that hadn't been able to be expressed in my acting career you know like I have a very I have very dark tastes you know and some of the some of the work that I'd done I was in a tv miniseries called the crimson petal and the white which is a period piece but it's very dark in tone like some of the pieces of work I'd done had kind of been able to explore the things that I'm really interested in but some of them hadn't you know and I really enjoyed the opportunity to kind of express like that my my sort of sensibilities my kind of aesthetic sensibilities in in this space a bit a bit more I mean had I had the opportunity to work you know like in in the horror space as an actor I I definitely would have done <laughs> you know it's just that you as an actor you get you know you get the career that you get and you know I'm incredibly fortunate with my career but um but yeah that that kind of diversity of tone you know is something that I would have I, I would definitely have explored more and obviously you have acted since directing this has that has it changed the way you act now you sort of step behind the lens and made this movie do you find that that side of your craft is, has been altered or, or changed in any way yeah very much <laughs> I mean I think um I think it's a really great it's a really great thing to do because I think that I think too that firstly I think that like you know you know how hard it is when you've when you've done it and then people talk about how difficult directing is and you know but um the pressure on you to you know um to account for every single decision that's made I mean all film and television is is just like thousands thousands and thousands of creative decisions that are being made every single second what shoes are they wearing where are they standing are they going up and down the corridor is the camera moving it's just thousands and thousands of decisions and your name is on every single one of those decisions and that is a level of pressure that you know actors just don't they don't they have one department they have one thing to worry about you know so that's different but also I think you know I have I had sort of maybe got to a stage where I thought like acting is such a pointless job it's such a stupid thing to do with your life you know all of those sorts of things and and actually when you're directing the actors are so important you know what they do what they give is so vital that I was able to kind of like shift my perspective on acting a bit in a way that I think has been very helpful to me because I thought oh well there is one other person in the world that really needs me to do a good job and actually cares whether or not it's good or not and that's of course that's the director you know and so that I think has been a good thing for me because I'm not going to work feeling quite so like what am I doing with my life you know. <laughs> Have you now uh, done it and directed a feature length film? Can you, because I mean, you get so many people, so many sort of uh, film uh, actors or turn directors um, who star in their own movies. Can you, was that ever a possibility for you? Now you've, you've, you've done this. Can you imagine, yeah, how hard must, must that be to combine those two things? Because I can only imagine how all-encompassing it must be to, to direct something. The idea of acting in something as well seems like a whole nother level but yeah now, now you've done it is that something that you would do maybe direct yourself in in something I've no I've no desire to do that it just feels too hard I don't know how I don't know how people do it I mean just like physically in terms of how the day is structured you know if you're in hair and makeup while well, they're lining up shots and like I just don't I I'm I'm not a multitasker like you know I it, it's not something that I I think I would ever feel sort of able to do and also you know I think, um, you know, if I if I imagine a role and imagine myself in it, it's not like I can't imagine like 10 other people who'd be just as good. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like there's not a shortage of great actors, you know, luckily. So, um, yeah, it's not something I imagine ever, ever wanting to do or or, or actually being forced to do because a lot of the time people have to do it you know in order to finance their projects but you know um I don't um, I don't imagine I'll ever be in a position where I'll be under like huge pressure to appear in it <laughs> I mean but in this instance I mean you, the, the, the those who did take on the roles were so wonderful and I'm like I mean such a brilliant kind of trio of performances but I'll start first with Alec I mean he's just I mean since the first the first time I saw him in something was for I'm sure for many people it's God's own country and he's just got this kind of this nuance and vulnerability and yet there's something dark in him that's, that makes his characters so layered he must have been I mean in regards to the casting of this was he someone that was always in mind and where, how did he come to be the the, the, the part in this the, the, the sort of lead role in this movie well I I think I didn't I didn't have any of the cast sort of really I mean I suppose Imelda but you know I didn't think she'd do it you know but um no, I, I, I sort of met the casting director and said, you know, the thing that I really want, uh, the thing that's important, obviously, with his character is that you have uh, somebody that the audience forms a really strong emotion 
emotional connection with and and she said his name and I immediately just was like you know, I'd seen God's own country and I just he has an intense uh intensely sympathetic manner and face and he feels very his his emotions are so easy to access he's a lovely actor and a very very sort of kind nice supportive man you know and I think because of the subject matter I was worried that I would have lots and lots of intense conversations that would be long conversations on set trying to kind of, because I know what it's like as an actor, you know, you trying to understand the character and we just didn't have the time <laughs> to do that. And so he, Alec was just able to really put his trust in, in me, which was really hard with a film like this. Um, and he's, yeah, and he's absolutely amazing and should be doing like loads and loads and loads of films because he was uh, incredible to work with. And, and Imelda too. I mean, obviously, you know, that she's someone who's been in the industry a sort of a long time now. To have her experience on that set, but also just her brilliance. I mean, you said that you asked her, you're quite surprised. She said yes, but you must have been so thrilled that she she accepted this role. Yeah, I mean, it was it was very much the thing where they're like, "Who are you looking for?" And you're like, "Well, I'm looking for an Imelda Staunton type," you know. And they're like, "Well, have you thought about asking her?" And I was like, "Well, not really," but we did, and. Um, yeah, and she said yes. And I think, you know, the thing with Imelda is, you know, you write something and then you get her and the thing that you've written is like so much bigger and better and more brilliant and funny. And like, I really love that she embraced the humor of it and made it feel sly and um, yeah. And, and also, you know, to have somebody like that, you learn so much from great actors when you're when you're directing, you know, they sort of gently teach you how to do it. Have you thought about doing it like this? You know, and you're like, well, of course, you know, there's the, you know, there's a sort of um, generosity to really great actors, which I think, you know, is just a, a great, a great benefit of working with people like her. Uh, you mentioned some of the kind of the dark themes in this. I mean, there are so, I mean, there's such a myriad of different kind of themes and, and sort of uh, stuff bubbling under the surface. I mean, there's also, you know, there's PTSD, there's xenophobia, you know, sort of early on as well when Alex's character is walking down the street. I mean, in regards to exploring really real themes in the prism of a genre movie, horror just works so well, doesn't it? What, what is it about this genre, you think, that allows us to, to kind of sort of, uh, sort of examine and kind of study such a, a, a host of real life, quite emotional kind of subjects? well I mean obviously you know drama does that but I think with drama there's always the possibility of remove you know like I think while it can obviously elicit strong re reactions you know if you watch the bicycle thieves you know and you're going to cry at the end but I think for me horror has the huge advantage of um being able to kind of open up your kind of your your opportunity to experience and feel very strong emotions that aren't just perhaps sadness do you know what I mean or comedy if you're watching a comedy so you know you can you know be afraid you can be disgusted you can be like it has a very rich and wide palette of feelings you know yes you can laugh in a horror film and you can be sad but also you know there are these kinds of color, different kind of emotions that you can feel and you often feel them alongside the characters so there's a very strong association with the protagonist which I think in a way is, is often harder to kind of to 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 find in drama where you're obviously kind of you know perhaps analyzing the protagonist a bit more or their actions at slightly more of a remove I mean I've certainly always you know felt that when I w was watching a horror film when I do when I do watch them I find myself utterly kind of absorbed in the feeling of it uh, in a way that I don't as much or as often with with with, dra with dramas yeah I love this notion as well, this idea of evil must be contained, this idea that it should be kind of kept and almost fed at bay as opposed to being like eradicated. Can you just elaborate a bit on that part of the narrative and what interested you about it? Because I remember that was something I took when I saw the Babadook as well a few years ago. That was something from that that just I couldn't get out of my head. And in this instance as well, I thought it was such a fascinating area to, to explore that whole idea. Yeah, well, I suppose we can't you know you, you're not you're not going to get rid of the kind of elemental part of human nature which involves extreme violence you know and greed and um you know and 
you know in the case of my film as well like violent misogyny like you're not we're never going to rid the world of that so what do you what do you do with it you know where do you put it and also I think something that I was very interested in which I'd not really I guess I'd not really sort of thought very consciously and it wasn't until I'd wrote the film and directed it and now sort of having to talk about it more I've sort of become more aware of is this like whole idea the whole nature of forgiveness what it means to forgive somebody or a group of people or a society for a kind of terrible wrong you know like how much can you forgive people who haven't acknowledged the thing that they've done how much can you move forward if if that hasn't occurred and that there's some sort of cleansing there's something cleansing about the pain of birth you know about the agony of kind of delivery you know that kind of metaphor the idea of kind of um you know a transference or a transfiguration you know from one state to another state which is very painful but through that you acknowledge the kind of you know the sub the the the, the, the um the misdeeds of yourself and you know and you kind of move into a new state of being a sort of purer state of being through acknowledging your own kind of wrong I mean these are all sort of hopefully um not too kind of heavy hand did metaphors in the film but they're definitely things that I think I must have been thinking about and obviously um you know occurred to me now when we talk so much about like our societies going through transition and how much we acknowledge and kind of accept the wrongs of our past yeah I thought the, the whole theme of forgiveness was fascinating here I mean because it can be manipulated and maybe in the prism of kind of religious practice to maybe let people off the hook I just want I mean do, do you think that people can be through that I'm going to say can people be forgiven too easily but that seems like a bit of a strange question but that does seem like something that is being explored in this movie yeah I think I think I definitely I mean I didn't grow up in a religious community so I always feel slightly like it's not my place to kind of criticize but you know I, d I definitely feel like forgiveness is extended very easily when it comes to issues of kind of sexual politics do you know what I mean that we, we haven't really had a sort of global, national, international reckoning with the fact that, you know, we live in a society that is run and controlled by men for the benefit of men. And a lot of the time that has been done through religion. Like I think I would find it very difficult as much as I'm attracted to religion and religious thought. I just do feel this kind of complete absence of real acknowledgement of what it means to grow up in a, in a patriarchy. And those are things that I still feel very strongly about. And although, you know, I have many friends who are religious and you know and religion is an incredibly important part of their lives that's something that I've always sort of struggled with maybe thinking but how do you square that with you know the sense that you are living in a society that does value com you completely equally you know and um yeah that de that's definitely kind of in in there in the film yeah and you know, I just just one last question, really, but it's because you, you sort of mentioned that you've been talking a lot about the movie. Of course, it's you know it's been sort of playing sort of different uh, festivals and stuff and like that. So it's kind of you've had you've done lots of interviews for it. Have you found that you have changed or understood your own text, your own story, in maybe a slightly different way through chatting about it to people? And is that quite an interesting sort of thing for you? my understanding of the film you mean yeah yeah just yeah just your own kind of uh, your own personal relationship with the movie has that kind of been altered through the through conversations you've had from about about the the themes that play yeah I mean I think I think that's something that I really I mean something that's bad that can happen is that you end up kind of I don't know like you go through a period of saying the same thing do you know what I mean you have kind of pat responses to things but I think what really helps doing this kind of thing is that you're forced to watch the film a lot of times, you know, like in its finished state and with different audiences. And that has been the thing, I think probably maybe more than, more than interviews really, it's the, that's been the thing that's kind of really affected me because, you know, the more that I've watched it and the more that I've watched it with a remove and a distance, you know, the more I kind of have reckoned with the piece of work that I've made, you know, and actually I think, actually that's been a really great thing for me because I think at the beginning you know and this is something that I don't think you have so much as an actor because you know I don't know you're you're always slightly at a remove from the piece of work you know you didn't write it you know and and whether or not the film is good is not entirely your sort of responsibility but you know right at the beginning of the film being released and known at Sundance you know you're sat there thinking go and the more that you watch it and the more of that time passes, I think the more that that kind of fades away, 
And the more you think, you know, I'm going to die one day and like my kids are going to watch this movie and like people and like, am I, do I, am I proud of it? Do I think it's good? Do you know, like, is this the film I wanted to make? And like, what about me? And like, and I think that that's, that's the thing that's been really beneficial because I think at the end of the day, you know, I watch it now, like, you know, two years after making it and doing screenings at the BFI and Picture House. And I think, yeah, I'm really proud of that piece of work. And that's, um, sort of been more important than sitting there thinking like I hope people like it which hopefully becomes less and less relevant the more you see it yeah well I think you've got a lot to be proud of of this one it's a fantastic it's striking uh, so just very quickly before I do go there my next question is can we expect to or hope to see you behind the lens or writing and directing again soon because it feels like this could really be where where you the, the path your kind of career goes down and I'm really excited to see what could be next I bloody hope so <laughs> <laughs> like I, up. I mean I have a lot of other projects lots and lots and lots but you know the kind of work I want to make a lot of it is very unusual and quite weird and like it's not going to be like I'm not going to make a film every year you know it's some of them are going to take a while and that's okay because I also have this other job that I really love and I think you know my dream is that I will get to kind of do both and then you know because I act and because I'm able to kind of spend a lot of my time doing that I'm able to kind of like foster these other projects, which, you know, might take a little bit longer than the average. Although actually all films take ages to get made. So even longer than the average. <laughs> well, unusual and weird is good. So I think, I, yeah, keep making unusual and weird things. We need more unusual. And weird I am doing things. my best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, Billy, well, thank you so much for your time today. And best of luck with, I mean, the release, I know the release is so soon. So I hope, look, best of luck with that, that. And I hope you, yeah to enjoy it again on the big screen with, uh, with your friends and family and even your aunt who knows if she she might like it after all yeah who knows maybe she'll love it <laughs> maybe she'll love it exactly. yeah brilliant all right well thank you so much for the time today yeah. thanks so much Cheers. Cheers. have care. a good day you too bye ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys huh hey, you guys. is yeah. that from the goonies it is indeed, yeah. nice hey you guys